That's better. Before we get into this video, make sure you are subscribed and let's keep it fuerte. Polly here on the Latino slant, spectacles and all. I mean, our guest, I'm going to need to look and sound smart because he's muy smart. Scribe Light is everybody, 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 Scribe Light. How are you doing? Good morning, everyone. Hi, Polly. Nice to see you. Yes, yes. Um, well, we got the we got the, the true crime Menendez bug. Yes. Uh, between you, your channel, my channel, and uh, Misery Machine. So there's been an update, and uh, that's why I invited you on, because I saw your your post. I mean, <laughs> let's read this. Uh, Kim Kardashian talks Menendez Brothers' potential prison release, and Cooper Koch weighs in on Ryan Murphy's internet and possibly shooting bonus monsters material episodes we talked about this remember we said that yeah there uh ryan murphy is trying to do some kind of or, or thinking about doing some um additional episodes in case that the in uh, the menendez case evolves further from the end of the uh, series and the documentary mm -hmm. that we suddenly get a retrial or a new hearing or they get released or something mm -hmm. uh it's it's a very small part of this article but the actor basically Effectively says, uh, no thanks, I don't want to be typecast, please uh, cast me in other things now. Oh, really? Cooper said No, that. yeah, no, he's, he, yeah, he, he, at the end of the article, he's, he basically says he's not interested in, in reprising his role as the, the Menendez, um, as uh, Eric Menendez, I believe it is. Because this he's, is after, yeah. I mean, he great performance, I thought. Um, oh, yeah, no, th this is the thing yeah. we talked about on the, um, uh, the Living on Borrowed Crime episode, is that um, uh, I appreciated many elements of the series in pieces, Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't have any complaints about that. Uh, but like I, I have some overall sort of, as far as just as a show and narrative, uh, sort of element, but here we have Kim Kardashian citing this fictionalized, dramatized TV series mm. with conversations that we know never happened, events that have been extrapolated from anecdote. Um, and she says, oh, well, this is convincing me they need to be freed. Yeah. She's basing it off of a really pretty much a 50 50 truth and a probably 50 percent embellishment uh which you all you know which you to me you always have to do to have good drama for a television or a movie sure you know what i mean uh she says i think they never got a fair fair second trial and i feel like ever since for me watching ryan murphy's monsters really opened up and showed me so much about abuse <laughs> imagine yeah, the pro yeah. No one believed you. Okay. Well, here, Go ahead. yeah, but the yeah, but the problem is, is that the uh, so the, this the series, and I thought about this more after our mm. after our stream. The, the, the series, there's no mystery as to who killed who. I mean, it's not a who done it in that sense. No. The only question, no. the only real question is the legitimacy of the rationalization for the killings, and right. does a history of abuse mitigate? Uh, either their responsibility or somehow conjure up a self-defense um, defense. And uh, in California, past incidents of abuse do not somehow mitigate murder. They just don't. That's just under law. The, the, the argument that the Menendez brothers made was an imperfect self-defense in that they had a, in, in, to, put it, to put it simply, they had a good faith belief that their lives were in danger, even though looking at it from an objective viewpoint, there was no immediate danger to them. And given the circumstances, simply on the basis of where the victims were situated at the time mm -hmm. uh, versus their having prepared for this by purchasing firearms, uh, reloading after doing one round of shooting yeah. and going back again. A little bit again. of planning there. A little bit of planning. Yeah, there's a, yeah premeditation <laughs> of some kind is already there. And the fact, Kim Kardashian's saying, imagine if no one believed you. Well, it would really help if someone was a credible witness to begin with. Because, and here, here's something I didn't, I didn't, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I thought about. One of the, one of the key driving points that the psychologists and everybody else use to say there was something more to this because of just the outright savagery of the murders. Mm. This wasn't this week because, you know, there was, there was something that that, and the implication is, is that their history of abuse fueled them to just go absolutely buck wild in how brutal and violent the whole thing was. It was very but personal. What, what is your, where's your, what is your thought? Like your surmise of that? Like, well, know. here's the thing. What was their immediate 
answer to who did this to their parents when the police confronted them. Right, the mafia. The mafia. Okay, right. w- where do you think two yutzes like Lyle and Eric Menendez in their mm-hmm. late teens, early 20s, where do you think they would have gotten an idea of what a mob hit looks like? Maybe the well, movies. let me throw that yes, and then they wrote about it. Uh, mm-hmm. But also, too, Jose's dealings with, uh, you know, record uh, record recording, uh, Latino artists, you know, there's a lot of, uh, let's say, shawarmi characters, uh, a lot of, you know, negocios, you know, a lot of uh, uh, p- people of questionable um, uh, character that perhaps they kind of, you know, saw in the back, you know, there maybe they were in the background or maybe whatever stories Jose shared. But we definitely know that uh, the boys from the Menudo were historically abused as well. Oh no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking about like the possibility that there may have been some uh, organized crime thread somewhere in the background of Jose Menendez. I'm talking about simply the staging of the killings. The, oh yeah, that was silly. That was silly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the, the, the psychologist rationalization is this: this wouldn't have been this violent if there wasn't some, you know, rage, trauma, abuse built up For behind sure. it. Whereas okay. I'd say. I'd argue that uh, that they went as uh, over the top as they did in order to frame it as a mafia hit based on what they understood a mafia hit to be Ooh. from movies like Scarface and so on. So this wasn't – this they were wasn't, big Scarface uh, fans, weren't they? Uh, I, well, I, at least movie fans. I think Scarface was in there too. So when they think of what does a mafia hit look like versus what a police officer knows what a professional hit looks like, uh, I, I, I always wondered if, if everybody was sort of projecting an abuse, uh, motivation on the level of violence that took place versus just a, we have to stage it to look like a mafia hit. So that was always something I was curious about, but yeah, no. So like speeding up now with this generation, you know, and oh, you know, men too can be abused and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sure. so, so there's a lot of sympathy now. Uh, I think that's what this Kim Kardashian thing uh, was, but she's jumped on and she's got a history of, uh, you know, com- coming to the aid of people on death row. Uh, Rodney Reed is one that I remember from the past. Yeah. She's um, working to become a lawyer. She, she passed the baby bar exam back in 2021 and she's still presumably working towards an actual law degree. So she fancies herself some kind of like legal crusader or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she, but but she assesses the second trial as being unfair, uh, which I'm I'm sure there's several legal scholars who have actual degrees who would disagree with her on that. Right, um, right. So here, but, here she says, and, and and to go on that, you know, in regards to uh, the current DA Gil Gascon, she says the mm-hmm. DA's office really should right the wrong that they did many years ago. It doesn't mean that they shouldn't have done time. It just means that they real. I really believe that they deserve a second chance, and they've done enough time so if this gets commuted down it's time served correct yes uh, it, well it, conceivably it could be yes if he, if he decides to commute it down to second degree murder or something then yeah it would have been time served and like you guys saw i did a you know i just happened to have run into i was i was down down uh in la at a at a, at a meeting and then we we were walking down the street to, to our parking spots and we literally saw the menendez press conference getting set up i'm like well let me let me just do a little hey uh so you saw that you guys Mm -hmm. also uh heard that i'm trying to get an interview with gil gascon and it's going to be very there's going to be certain questions i can and cannot ask if i get the interview described which i think is interesting you know that'd be cool what would you ask what would you ask uh, in regards to the menendez case what would you ask gil gascon because he's got new evidence that's what's going Mm -hmm. on right now what would you ask him uh i guess i would ask him Uh specifically what flaws he considers have taken took place in the second trial that uh uh, he thinks would have mitigated uh the process um uh i I mean just out of curiosity i would ask what if any effect on his deliberations in this uh, were fueled by the Ryan Murphy 
uh, mm. doc the dr drama, not the documentary, but but the but the series, and right. or Kim Kardashian's involvement. Um, right, because he even said a couple of weeks ago, Ryan Murphy even said that these boys are going to be home by Christmas. Right, which is you know that that's a, that's a Babe Ruth calling shot thing that I don't think I've I've seen before. I'd be curious if that because I don't justice just e even even uh, in situations where you have a uh, a legitimate overturning of a past conviction or something, the wheels of justice don't turn quite that quickly. But sure. either way, um, but and, uh, uh, yeah. wrapping up the story really quick, Koch said sure. uh, like you had said earlier. I think we told the story. We did it. Uh, I think I'm ready to go on to the next thing. I love talking about it, and I've loved advocating for them. And I'm really excited for them to get out, hopefully. But in terms of being Eric again, I think I'm ready to let that go. Um, that's fine and dandy, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if, if, there's a, if there's a good payday, he'll come back and do another episode or two. Probably so. I mean, I can understand that he'd probably want to do something in between because as far as a right. breakout role is concerned, and especially oh. the Hurt Man episode, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he gave a really great performance. Uh, f physically speaking, he looked about as close as to Eric Menendez as you could probably cast for. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, out of everybody in that show that wasn't already pre-established, he probably has the highest profile. Uh, and he so, met him, right? He's gone and hung yeah, out yeah. yeah, he's he's gone and met them in prison, as far as I understand it. So, as mm -hmm. far as his career is concerned, I can completely understand him not wanting to get typecast as Eric Menendez forever. And so, if he if he had a decent role, it looks like he's trying to get uh, Patrick Bateman in the uh, American Psycho remake, which I'm sure will just be completely worth all of our time. Um, well, if you can get something in between to sort of like break up the monotony. <laughs> Yeah, that's I a whole other conversation. That. That's, a, that's like a midnight sets conversation. conversation. <laughs> but I, I would say to connect that tissue, I mean, if he was smart, him and his team would probably get Ryan to uh, like, I'll do this role again, but I want to do this role in your film, like in another film, like, a, like, let's get a contract going. Right. And that would be but all, smart. But it, it's also interesting that just as a side note that he goes mm -hmm. uh, from. Eric Menendez to I want to play Patrick Bateman. Like, okay, so just going from one psycho killer to the next. Okay, sure. Yeah, well, talk about works, works. That's fine. Yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, well, guys, yeah, uh, yep. yeah. Go ahead. No, that no, that's all I had. Well, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, we're gonna be doing some more coverage on this. Uh, I do recommend you see Monsters. I'm currently still going through the docu series. I, I keep falling asleep. Um, but you can either catch uh, some more coverage on Scribe's channel or my channel. Uh, make sure you are subscribed to Scribe Light. His link is going to be in the video box description. And remember, wherever you're at, keep your slam fuerte. Gracias. That's better. Crack open.